This is it. This is currently the best way to enjoy VR experiences in my estimation, whether they be games or movies that you can watch or just get lost in when you put this headset on. This is the Oculus Quest 2, which just recently launched to much fanfare. There are a lot of people raving about this thing across media and across YouTube. People are starting to receive these in their homes. I've had it for a few weeks and I have been having a ton of fun with this device. And I have to say that this has been an incredible year for VR video games. We had Half-Life Alex, Iron Man VR, and more recently Star Wars Squadrons. And I can't think of a better meeting point, uh, a more sort of immersive and mass market meeting point of VR than Star Wars Squadrons and Oculus Quest 2. And of course you can play Squadrons on Oculus Quest 2 because that's one of the big selling features about the Quest. It, it, both 1 and 2 is that you can connect a USB-C wire, a cable, and Oculus will sell you one if you want to, but actually the charge cable for the Oculus One, I found, could work as an Oculus Link between this and my PC, so I was able to enjoy Star Wars Squadrons, the big monster Star Wars VR experience right now, on Oculus Quest 2, and it was damn fine. It was not as smooth as PlayStation VR, uh, but it looked better, and I know that this is still early days. Oculus Link actually is still in beta. They're still tweaking things, and obviously Star Wars Squadrons has just launched, and that is still being tweaked as well, so I can appreciate that it will only get stronger and better looking. And actually, I looked at Star Wars Squadrons on Oculus Rift S, and it did look better, but then my system crashed. And I have been playing a ton of VR, and I just couldn't deal with with more tinkering and trying to figure out how to get Star Wars Squadrons working optimally on Oculus Rift S when it had just worked fine on Oculus Quest 2. And it did take a little bit of fiddling and finagling to get everything working on Oculus Quest 2, I have to say. It wasn't as seamless as I would like it to be. And I want to pause here for a second to uh, just implore the VR dev community, the publishers of games and software out there, hardware manufacturers like Facebook and HTC, Valve themselves, and PlayStation. We have got to get beyond exclusives in VR. It's still so niche, it still represents kind of a small sliver of people that are going to enjoy this medium, and holy crap is it enjoyable. There should be no barriers to entry, and every piece of software should be able to be enjoyed on every headset out there, and the sooner we get to that, the better, because that will actually accelerate the growth and the acceptance of uh, VR as a platform. I think this is going to be the device that really helps to do that. Judging by the social media blasts about people that have picked this up and all of the YouTube videos that I've been seeing pop up about Oculus Quest, there's obviously a growing and uh, already quite large market for this kind of entertainment out there. And this thing does it beautifully. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's faster, and it's cheaper than the Oculus Quest 1, and that is incredibly significant. We've got a new processor on this thing. It's called the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2, which compares to the Snapdragon 835 on the original Quest. There's six gigabytes of RAM. In terms of storage, you've got a choice between a 64 gig model or a 256 gigabyte model, and the 64 gig model starts at 300 bucks US, which is an extraordinary price. You get the headset, you get a charging brick and the cable, and you get two of these uh, uh, brand new snazzy Oculus Touch controllers. The refresh rate is the same on Oculus Quest 2 as it was on Oculus Quest 1 at 72 hertz, but you can actually boost it to 90 hertz already. It's experimental on Oculus Quest 2, and it will likely uh, make your system run a little bit hotter, but it's being tested and tweaked and improved and software updated, and uh, it does make things look a little bit slicker and shinier. It doesn't run in all apps, you know, and a lot of games are kind of, you know, 
you know, testing things out a little bit right now. But the major story here, of course, is that the resolution has been bumped up considerably. We're now looking at 1832 by 1920 per eye as opposed to 1440 by 1600 per eye. And you can feel that and sense that right away in software. But all of the horsepower increases on Oculus Quest 2 has meant that people are able to go back to software and make enhancements uh, and make improvements. And I did a little bit of side-by-side -side comparison. Of course, I played Beat Saber on both versions. And as I was reviewing this, the multiplayer mode of Beat Saber dropped, which is insanely fun. Uh, but I played Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, and I saw there was a major difference going from Quest 1 to Quest 2. A lot more detail, a lot more texture, definition in the environments that I was walking through. I've also seen development videos where people are comparing the amount of objects that can be on screen at the same time on Quest 2 to Quest 1, and it's considerable. And there is going to be a lot of software that takes full advantage of what this thing is capable of and creates a little bit of a discrepancy. So there will be games and I know that a lot of people jumped on board the Oculus Quest bandwagon not too long ago and frankly it's still a fantastic device and it was my favorite VR device prior to this one coming out but you're going to see some performance enhancements in software soon that will only run on Oculus Quest 2 and not run on Oculus Quest 1 and of course Facebook wants to make that happen as soon as possible and while I'm talking about Facebook that is the elephant in the room you can no longer use your Oculus account on Oculus Quest 2 you have to to use a Facebook account and you have to kind of make sure that you manage your privacy because of course this is a device with cameras all over it. It's tied to a company that is notorious for sharing information and data about its users and also spreading a lot of disinformation out there. There is a lot of anger and disappointment about Facebook that's all understandable and I totally get that. I do have a Facebook account. I had an Oculus account prior to that and so I had to merge the two and it kept my Oculus name and so none of my personal stuff is out there, but you have to be diligent about going into the privacy functions if you're very concerned about all that. And I totally understand if you are. And honestly, I can see a lot of people being turned off on this as a purchase because of the massive Facebook integration. On the other side, Facebook has been an incredible investor in VR technology, first by buying Oculus, but also by constant marketing and discussion and all the events that they put on around VR. And this is, I think, the most aggressive consumer-friendly, consumer-facing statement that VR has produced so far. This is a very easy thing to sell people. You take it out of the box, you charge it for a few minutes because it's already going to have a little bit of a charge when it arrives at your doorstep. So you stick it on your head, you do all of the setup while you've got the head-mounted display on, and minutes later, you are lost in some kind of awesome VR experience. And of course, there's lots of great Quest exclusive software, which I don't like. I don't like that there's exclusives tied to any VR tech right now or games. Uh, but there's games that Oculus has paid for that will run beautifully on this device. And you don't need to tether to anything. And that's the real story about Quest 1 and Quest 2 is that they are completely tetherless. You don't have to connect to anything. You don't have to be wired to anything. And that means complete freedom. You create a guardian on your floor, a virtual wall, so you're not walking into things and bashing your hands on things. Things. And as you walk towards the edge of your Guardian, the head-mounted display will know that and it will automatically adjust to the camera so you can actually can look out from the headset into the real world. It's incredible. So that actually does a very good job at keeping you reined in because you can get excited and animated and get super fired up about the enemies that you're trying to wipe out or the race that you're trying to win. And you don't want to bust the illusion by crashing into something. So you got to be a little bit careful there. But that freedom is really what VR is capable of you know it really gives you a sense of transporting you to a reality that is just incredibly enticing and exciting you know and I saw that again and again it was very hard to get out of VR. It wasn't just the video games that I was playing. I was surfing around on some of the video content that's on there, watching live performances, music and stuff. And, you know, by this point, Oculus has invested not only in hardware, but also tons and tons of software and partnerships. You can, of course, record videos of the stuff that you are enjoying and then share them. You can cast from this device to your phone so you can actually share what you're experiencing with people in the room with you, which is pretty cool. You can also upload videos to Facebook or go live 
live on Facebook. I do wish that this would allow you to go live directly to YouTube. And there were a little bit more options in terms of being able to share your content. I think you can share to Dropbox and Google Drive or upload to those. It's still definitely reined in and, and focused on the Facebook walled garden, which I understand. And had we not had all of the reasons to be very distrustful of Facebook, I wouldn't care so much. But of course we do. We live in that reality. It sucks because I know there are incredible people, incredibly talented people at Facebook, all the developers that are heavily invested in crafting awesome experiences for this. Still one of my favorite experiences more than a year later, I think, is Pistol Whip. It's just such a ridiculously enjoyable time. It's a perfect fit on Oculus Quest 2. I've seen that the people from uh, Cloudhead Games have been tweeting that sales have gone up 10 time since the launch of Oculus Quest 2 on Pistol Whip, so congrats to them. Now, of course, I've played a ton of games on Oculus Quest 2 so far, and I've got lots more to play, but I was really impressed by The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. It creates an amazing sense of immersion into The Walking Dead universe. It's very creepy, very, very well put together. You're basically salvaging all kinds of scraps and broken and rusted weaponry, and you have to contend with the zombie horde. <laughs> Res is available in VR on Oculus Quest 2, and it's still as trippy and mind-bending as it's always been. It's an incredible VR game. Space Channel 5 VR just launched a super cool dance game, for those that don't know what Space Channel 5 is all about. Dash Dash World is a VR kart racing game in the spirit of Mario Kart, where drifting is actually a part of it, and you pick up all kinds of power-ups, like, of course, guns and things, and you're blasting at all of the other cutesy cartoon kart racers ahead of you. Uh, it plays wonderfully. Handling is a amazing. It's a very, very well-made game. It's not massive, it's not Mario Kart size, but the VR immersion is wonderful. I played Solaris. It's basically like a stripped-down, light-on-textures kind of variation on uh, first-person shooter multiplayer games like Halo. Certainly not state-of-the-art in terms of visuals, but the experience is pretty cool. It really reminded me of playing a Halo multiplayer match, but everything's in VR. Cubism is a pretty cool puzzle experience where you get all kinds of shapes and a cube, and you got to fill up the cube in the proper way, and of course you can use the Oculus Touch controllers. I didn't use the finger experimentation. You can actually just use your fingers in Oculus Quest. The sensors will read your finger manipulation. I don't know if just using your fingers in Cubism is possible. That seems like a perfect fit, though. I played a little bit of Echo VR, which is the Quest version of Echo Arena. This is Ready at Dawn's exceptional robot sport game where you actually <laughs> can punch your opponent in the head and shock them for a little bit. You take a, a Tron like Frisbee and try to get it through a, a goal before your team does and you're floating around in, um, in an anti-gravity space and you have to deal with the physics of all of that. Uh, it can make people feel a little bit queasy, um, but of course I'm familiar with it and I have had pretty good luck with being able to wear VR headsets and not feel queasy that often. But the Echo VR is a super cool Oculus Quest experience, especially with that full freedom of movement that being tetherless provides. If you want to shoot at zombies with a little bit more increased fidelity on Oculus Quest 2, then Oculus Quest 1 Arizona Sunshine has got a bunch of new additions to the visual fidelity. Better resolution, a little bit more detail in the creatures that you gotta shoot in the head. I found the game to be a little bit thin, especially because it's one of the early VR experiences. It's been out for a couple of years now. And if you compare that to The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, it's just not quite the same. There's a tongue-in-cheek sarcastic quality about the game anyway, but it definitely feels overshadowed by Saints and Sinners played a couple of terrific combat experiences. One of them is called Until You Fall, and it's uh, creating kind of like holographic knights. They're kind of neon and glowy, but you've got all of these great battle stances and these sword moves. It was super fun to play. It's arcadey, kind of like a neon, <laughs> kind of hyper-colorful version of Dark Souls, but it's well made and it's a great fit for the freedom that Quest 2 allows. The same thing could be said for In Death Unchained, which also feels a little bit like a, a Dark Souls roguelike kind of thing. You're basically trying to survive as long as you can on each run that you go on. This one's all about archery though and you actually have an arrow that allows you to teleport to uh, a space ahead of you and you could do some pretty cool things. I actually teleported onto a rooftop and was able to shoot at my enemies from up above. You've got different arrows. Some will 
will burn them, some will, you know, just hit them in the face and they'll die. And you get attacked. You've got all kinds of zombie-like creatures coming at you and other archers and supernatural creations coming at you. There's this mist and this fog, which obviously cuts down on draw distance, but it also adds this ominous, creepy vibe to it. That was one of the most enjoyable games that I played in my testing time with Quest 2. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I'll have a bunch more to talk about in terms of software for this machine. Um, it can run your games very, very well, and it does it in two flavors. You can do it completely, you know, wirelessly, or you can tether up, and you can enjoy PC VR experiences too. I think this is going to bring a ton of people to VR. If you pick up one of these things, even if you start from the 64 gigabyte model, which I will confess, I did fill up. I've got a sizable library of VR experiences that I can test out, and I'll put a video together about some of my favorite games that I've been playing on Oculus Quest 2. So you will fill up a 64 gig hard drive because it's so addictive and so enticing. You're going to check out tons and tons of video content too. That's also a really nice surprise. The higher resolution makes video watching really, really enjoyable, really fun. You can just sit back and you have like this giant cinema screen in front of you. And then if you want to, after you've experimented with the built-in hardware and the software that you can download directly to Oculus Quest, then you can tether and download the Oculus software to your computer. You can also connect through Steam VR and play any VR games that you might have on Steam, like Half-Life Alex through this device, through a single USB-C cable. And you can get super long ones if you want to. You just have to make sure that they're spec'd out properly. They have to be the most modern USB-C cables, I think 3.1. That will also keep your headset charged up a little bit, but you'll also be able to play PC caliber experiences at a pretty damn close to PC VR experience resolution, which is incredibly impressive. And just another massive value add to something that has already more than proven its value. The only hardware knock about this, of course, is that the battery life drains fairly quickly. It's gonna drain even faster if you notch it up to 90 hertz, which I did notice I was draining the battery every time I, I, I put this thing on because I just didn't wanna stop. It's so fun. It's a great product, just like Quest One was a great product. It feels like kind of like a pro upgrade. It doesn't feel like it's a, a full on revolution. It feels like it's just kind of strengthening what was already quite strong strong in the Quest 1. That being said, I'm not going to be playing on the Quest 1 pretty much, I'm, other than making comparisons and stuff to see how software runs between the two. I much prefer the experience here. Not a great big fan of the strap, even though it's lighter at 503 grams to 571 grams on the original Quest. It's still a front-heavy device, as you would imagine, because all of the processor and all of the, the guts of Oculus Quest 2 are in the front of the head-mounted display here. There is a Pro strap, which I'm seriously concerned considering picking up uh, because this is something that I keep on my face for a long time. I, I will say that it doesn't create the same amount of tension and grooves on my face that Quest 1 does, and it's a little bit more comfortable than that. The only weird thing that I've noticed when I've had the audio all cranked on here is that the music is pumped through the speakers on here, so you don't even need to put a headphones on or anything like that. You can, of course, if you want to. There's also uh, Bluetooth support already that's still being tuned and tweaked, but eventually able to put in AirPods or wireless headset or something like that. Um, but this does have speakers built into it. And when you've got it on your face, I noticed that there was little jets of air, little pulses of air, depending on how loud the sounds were and the music was in the experience that, that, that I was playing. I would have these little, and I would feel them on the side of my face. It'd be like, blah, 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 blah. and it was weird at first. I thought there were bugs on my face. Uh, but no, it's just the air blasting out of the speakers on the Oculus Quest 2. This is crazy, crazy fun. This is good times. And I don't know for sure if you need to upgrade if you've already got the Oculus Quest 1. You've got a very capable and super fun platform already. And you know there will be an Oculus Quest 3, so you may want to hold out a little bit. But those who have not jumped into VR yet and those that will put up with some of the privacy hurdles that the Facebook integration means for Quest 2, you're going to have an incredible time. And I can't wait to hear all of you Oculus Quest players out there, your experiences. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of this device. I love it. It's my favorite way to enjoy VR currently, and there is a ton of value packed into this little device. I'm gonna give the Oculus Quest 2 a nine out of 10.